I'll stay here debating the transphobes and arguing against real harm that's being perpetuated by Republicans, and you guys can stay on your terminally online ass purity checking each other, okay? And then, one day, history will look back, and we'll see. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Drama Alert. I know that's not how the intro goes. I couldn't remember Keemstar's intro because I haven't watched Drama Alert in ages. But you get the gist, okay? Today, we're going to talk about some of the Twitter drama because I am being viciously, savagely attacked, mutilated, if you will, by lefty Twitter. Now, what was my horrible horrendous crime well it all starts with this tweet right here this is where id poll gets you absolutely brain dead and this is a tweet from cat black saying that if her only two choices in a conversation about black experiences were candace owens and some white dude who read a book i think candace a black woman would have more to say so obviously this criticism of id poll i feel is very valid because here we have somebody saying that they would rather listen to Candace Owens about black issues solely because she is black, even though she will tell you racism isn't exi uh, doesn't exist, it's hardly even a problem, systemic racism is bullshit, and George Floyd was no angel. She would rather listen to that person than a white dude who read a few books. Now, what's the context of this tweet? This was the original question. Would you trust Candace Owens' views on black culture more than, say, a doctorate of African-American studies of any race? So, look at this. This was the question. Would you trust Candace Owens' views on black culture more than a doctorate of African-American studies of any race? And her response is yes. She would rather talk to Candace motherfucking Owens than she would some white dude who read a few books. Um, just so you're, we're clear, uh, a doctorate of African American studies, that, that's not a dude who read a few books. Maybe this is just like hyperbole because we're on Twitter or whatever, but that, that's almost like anti-intellectualism right there. And then she says, I think Candace, a black woman, would have more to say. Overall, really, really cringy shit, dude. If you are willing to choose Candace Owens over a doctorate of African-American studies solely based on the fact that Candace Owens is black, then yes, that is brain-dead, cringy id poll. And I'm more than happy to call it out. So that was my tweet. Um, Calling it brain-dead, because, you know, that's what I do, being spicy on Twitter. So anyway, meanwhile, Noah Sampson, you guys remember this dude, right? Good old-fashioned Noah Sampson, the bisexual lighting video essayist. You might remember him from talking about the uh, the Debate Bro video where he claimed that Xander Hall was a racist based on, like, one out-of-context clip that he heavily, heavily misinterpreted in the most uncharitable way imaginable before walking virtually everything back in a conversation with Vosh. Now, when him and Vosh had a conversation, I felt like Vosh, to be honest, was too charitable to the Noah guy. Now, of course, it's probably better to be more charitable than to not be, of course, but I felt like Vosh was being really charitable with Noah Sampson, whereas I think this Noah guy is slimy, spineless, and I think that he is maliciously stupid. That's a little background about this dude. And he says, calling a black trans woman brain dead for talking earnestly about her experience is fine, apparently, because, uh, id poll? So, let's just chuckle at the fact that he is once again invoking id poll to try and criticize me for calling out id poll. <laughs> I, I, I gotta appreciate that one. Yes, I, I'm fine calling a black trans woman brain dead. For saying that she would rather talk to Candace Owens than a doctorate of African American studies solely because Candace Owens is a black woman. Yeah. I, I, I know maybe for you, you know, your little little soft little baby brain, maybe you're not very consistent. But me, I don't discriminate, okay? If you're being brain dead, I don't care if you're white. I don't care if you're black. 
I don't care if you're cis. I don't care if you're trans. I don't even care if you're fucking Italian, okay? I will call you brain dead if you're being brain dead. Because over here, we hate everybody equally. Just really, really cringy shit right off the bat. The fact that he himself is using idpol to try and shit on me for criticizing idpol. Like, I think everybody watching can absolutely uh, agree, for the most part, that if you are choosing to talk to Candace Owens in regards to black issues over a doctorate of African American studies who might be white, then idpol has poisoned your brain. You are an idiot. And I'm fine calling you one. Maybe this Noah Sampson guy is too spineless to actually take a position and stand by it. Or maybe he thinks, oh, well, she's black and trans, so therefore I can't be too mean. No, nah, bitch. Okay? Like I said, we don't discriminate over here. If you're being dumb, I'm going to call you dumb. Keep in mind, I keep calling this dude spineless, and he keeps proving the fact that he is spineless. He's already walking back his original take he made about me. Someone says, the context kind of makes it worse in my opinion. Trusting Candace Owens over someone that studied African American culture solely because Candace Owens is black is a big yikes. Or am I missing something here? And then Noah goes, I mean, yes, with that context, I disagree with the argument. What bothered me was people jumping to that conclusion based on the tweet in the original screenshot. Di didn't you in a way, jump to a conclusion based on the tweet in the original screenshot, dude. <laughs> I think how people interpret it, it speaks more so to how they already view Cat. You can't assume that people commented without the context just because you did. Owned. Literally within like a couple hours of him making this tweet, he's now walking it back going, well, I do disagree with her argument, but people shouldn't be so mean to a black trans woman. So in other words, long story short, Idpol has poisoned the minds of both Cat Black and Noah Sampson. Very fun. I love how that works. But then on top of this, we had some very lovely followers. I had a very, very nice little engagement with one of Noah Sampson's followers. It would still be my sincere religious belief that it would be funny if Hunter Avalone received a diagnosis for an inoperable brain tumor. So... This is the kind of uh, loving, accepting community that Noah Sampson has fostered here. Very nice that the guy who is now criticizing me for using the term brain dead is fostering a community full of people who are now saying it would be funny if I received a brain tumor. Now, I get edgy jokes. I get it, okay? But, like, can you imagine if I said something like this? <laughs> I would get so much shit. I would have so much hate thrown my way. And kind of rightfully so, if I made a take this fucking stupid. I kind of feel bad for this person because they say that I, they think that I should get a brain tumor when they're behaving in a way that indicates that they might already have a brain tumor. And then there was another thing too. This guy, the the cavernacle. I don't know who this this guy is, but I think I can guess that he's fucking stupid. He says, if I was an American fascist for years, I'd probably not be as confident giving my take on this, to be honest. Okay, I'm going to try not to get triggered here. Do, does anybody know the difference between like a, a transphobic Fox News tier conservative and an American fascist? Does anybody know the difference between these things or has all words lost their meaning has the word fascist completely lost its meaning and now we just call everybody we don't like fascists this kind of shit does annoy me because fascists are a real problem fascists are in america and fascists do deserve to be called out and condemned of course but if you're labeling like a normie conservative who is also transphobic as a fascist then i'm sorry but i feel as though you have lost your marbles and perhaps you don't know what the word fascist means. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, Google. Define fascism. Fascism is a form of far-right authoritarian ultranationalism characterized by dictatorial power, forcible suppression of opposition, and strong regimentation of society and the economy. So I was absolutely, I had some nationalist 
tendencies for sure. You know, I would be like, yeah, America first, America's great, whatever. Um, so there was that. But when was I ever in favor of forcible suppression of anybody? Now, when I was really young, I would get triggered AF if people like burned the American flag. But as I got older and even when I was making conservative stuff, conservative stuff, when I was making conservative videos, I would say like, hey, I don't agree with burning the American flag, but it's part of their right. They have a right to protest. Like fascists don't usually support people's rights to protest. They're in favor of forcible suppression of opposition. I was not, you know, if you think I was ever a fascist, I'd probably not be as confident giving my take on this. And he responded by sharing a clip of me, which legitimately is a fucking bad clip of me. Like it sounds very bad. It's from my edgy conservative days. Um, so yeah, but before we watch the clip, just a quick, quick thing. <laughs> he put his giant ass logo <laughs> right here, linking his Patreon. On, on a clip of me, Hunter thinks it's crazy for me to call him an ex-fascist. I don't know, guys. Have a look at this clip and let me know what you think. Okay, let's watch the clip. And just before we even get in, like, I'll preface with, yeah, this is absolutely a fucking cringy clip of me. And it's very yikesy what I say. But remember, we're not talking about, was it yikesy? We're not talking about, was I a dumb fuck bigoted conservative? The question is, was I a fascist? This migrant caravan is absolutely a threat, and it has now been proven. Well, if you ask me, this is sounding more and more like an invasion. But it wasn't until they got to the second border that the U.S. began firing tear gas. Now, shockingly enough, liberals are crying about this, pun intended, despite the fact that this was not only necessary, it was good. We are finally showing the world that we will not take this blatant disrespect towards our country and our laws. Like it or not, cry about it all day, America comes first. And I refuse to apologize for putting my needs and the needs of my fellow Americans above the needs of these foreigners trying to enter our country based on nothing but entitlement. It's time to build the f wall. So very like Trumpish kind of talking points. Um, obviously I'm not here to defend this clip. Like that's fucking yikes CAF. Um, but is this fascist? And are we going to say that people who are against illegal immigration are now fascists? I'm pretty sure there's there's more to being a fascist than just being against illegal immigration. Not to mention, even people like Bernie Sanders has uh, pushed forward populist talking points in regards to like putting American workers first. Let's go ahead and look it up, okay? I like the tenets of fascism. Now let's go ahead and look at these. Now keep in mind too, ultra-nationalism, being against the supposed foreigners and whatever, can be a tenant of fascism, but that by itself does not make you a goddamn fascist. And this is why I feel that I have a actually uh, deeper understanding of what these words mean than any of these dipshits on Twitter ever will. The cult of tradition. Let's see, was I ever, like, obsessed with traditional values? Hmm. Um, I don't remember entirely what my opinion was on stuff like tradition, but I never really clung to it very much. Um, even though I would make fun of gay people and whatever and trans people, I always believed that they, like, had the right to do what they wanted to do and live their lives freely. That was never really, that never changed. So the cult of tradition, no, I was never that. The rejection of modernism, the age of reason, uh, no, not at all. I was not anti-intellectual. In fact, I would try and use intellectual sources to prove my own points. Now, were my points wrong? Yes. Was I wrong to be transphobic and whatnot? Yeah. But the reason I was transphobic was because of all the cliche, conservative bullshit talking points that they're denying biology. This is what the science says, and they're saying this, blah, 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 blah. So, no. I never reject modernism. The cult of action for action's sake. Action being beautiful in and itself, it must be taken before without any previous reflection. Thinking is a form of emasculation. Uh, nope, I definitely didn't have that. No way, Jose. Especially considering the fact that even when I was hardcore conservative, people like Nick Fuentes wanted to debate me. 
They didn't agree with me. I was considered conservative ink. Okay. While they, the real fascists were fucking shitting all over people like me, even when I was conservative. Disagreement is treason. I, I don't really remember thinking people were like treasonous for disagreeing. The critical spirit makes distinctions and to distinguish is a sign of modernism. Um, I, I fail to have any kind of recollection of how I would have fit that part of the definition. Fear of difference. The first appeal of a fascist or prematurely fascist movement is an appeal against the intruders. Thus, your fascism is racist by definition. This one seems likely because I was afraid of trans people. Uh, and from that clip we saw, I was kind of fear mongering a little bit about the the intruders or the immigrants or whatever. Um, so maybe number five, I think I could probably say, yeah, I probably had a little bit of fear of difference. But notice how even this is the first appeal of a fascist or a prematurely fascist movement. So like, even if I were to grant this entirely, that still doesn't make me a fucking fascist. If anything, it makes me like have some mild fascistic tendencies which is such a major difference between being an American fascist. Appeal to social frustration? Uh, no, I don't think that I ever really, really... I mean, if I appeal to any social frustration, it would have been because I was, or other people were appealing to social frustration, which was trickling down to my beliefs, but I was never intentionally thinking like, okay, here's the social frustration. Here's how I'm going to use this and weaponize this to further my conservative beliefs. No, doesn't make sense. I never appealed to any social frustration. The obsession with a plot. No, I never believed that like there were the elites. I never believed in some JQ bullshit. I never believed in any of that shit. I never thought that there was some global satanic regime trying to take over everything. No, never had that. The enemy is both strong and weak. Um, I probably played into this ever so slightly uh, with both saying stuff like, you know, these loser liberals, blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, like they're controlling the schools and whatnot. But like a lot of that is just common conservative talking points. If you're going to say then, well, yeah, then every conservative is a fascist. Then I'm comfortable saying, well, then fascist has lost all meaning. Pacifism is trafficking with the enemy. No, not at all. I did not have any of this shit. Contempt for the weak. Um, I, I don't think so because I was vulnerable with my myself even with, uh, or I was vulnerable with my audience even when I was a conservative. I remember I did my video on my content changing. I did the video on me leaving religion. Um, and I was willing to be vulnerable about the fact, like my, my struggles with OCD and mental health. So I was willing to look vulnerable and look weak at times to, to my audience. So no, I don't think I would fit with the contempt for the weak. Everybody is educated to become a hero. No, not at all. Weaponry. It implies both disdain for women and intolerance and condemnation of non-standard sexual habits from chastity to homosexuality. So I would make fun of gay people and I was very homophobic and I was very transphobic. So you could say that I definitely t touched on this a little bit. But again, I was in favor still of those people living their lives freely. I think I was even OK with gay people being married. I didn't really care too much. I mainly just like to make fun of them which is still fucking disgusting and lame. It's not like I'm uh, uh, saying it was okay, but was it fascist? Mm, I think that's a little bit of a reach. Selective populism. There is in our future a TV or internet populism in which the emotional response of a selected group of citizens can be presented and accepted as the voice of the people. Uh, no. No, I never really, I never really played on that at all. Uh, it, fascism speaks new speak. All the Nazi or fascist school books made use of an impoverished vocabulary and elementary syntax in order to limit the instruments for complex and critical reasoning. Again, no. Part of the reason that I held some of my conservative beliefs is because I truly thought at the time that those beliefs were rooted in critical reasoning. So basically you have f fear of difference. You have one tenant of fascism that you've demonstrated with this yikesy clip of me where fascism is a multitude of these tenants combined. Now, of course, you don't have to have every single tenant in order to be a fascist, but you better have a goddamn more than one fucking tenant 
before you're going to claim that I was an American fascist. Get the fuck out of here with that stupid shit. You know the meme, the, the, the tolerant left is back at it again. I think we need to create our own meme, okay? The rehabilitative left, lol. Because here we have the left who claims to be all about rehabilitation. And then when somebody like me actually takes a lot of necessary steps to better myself, better my content, and try to undo some of the harm that my old content caused, then suddenly you are a fascist. And if I say no, tenant hunter, not tenant. Okay, my bad. Tenant. I'm sorry that I misspoke. <laughs> but then all of a sudden it's no, hunter, you were a fascist a couple years ago. And if I say, hold up, I had bad beliefs, but I was not a fascist. Then all of a sudden you see that's me downplaying it. That's me downplaying my bad past. Unless I agree with these chuckle fucks and unless I accept every fucking label they throw upon me, then I'm just downplaying it. I think a dude saying he's changed without realizing how bad he was and constantly downplaying it is bad. See? <laughs> See? If I don't accept his asinine label because I'm taking the nuanced approach, then I'm just downplaying it. I'm downplaying how bad I was, guys. The rehabilitative left strikes again. I want to give a little history lesson in regards to this, okay? Sit down because this is very, very important. Back in the 19, or back in the early 1900s, like 1915 through 1922, uh, when Mussolini was rising to power and his fascistic regime was taking over in Italy, at the time, that country was run by a small leftist coalition and fascism began to rise up. And do you know what happened? Anybody want to take a guess of what happened? The fascists rose up and the fascists took power. And do you know why that was? Because the leftist coalition at the time was too internally divided. The leftist coalition at that time was too internally divided to adequately respond to the fascistic uprising. And to be completely honest, I think that history really does seem to be repeating itself here. Now, all over again, we have the Groypers and Nick Fuentes rising up, garnering large blocks of power and influence. We have these transphobic bills being passed in all kinds of different states. And what is the left doing now? They're fighting with each other. They're not pushing against these harmful things. They're too busy fighting with each other. They're too busy gatekeeping each other. They're too busy purity checking every fucking thing they possibly can while real harm is being perpetuated and actual fascism is taking power in various different places. This is the unfortunate fact of the matter is that it seems that for decades upon decades upon decades, the left has failed to gain power because the left is almost self-destructive. They fight amongst themselves. They're constantly going for each other's throats and they're unable to adequately respond to fascistic uprisings, just like what happened in 1922 when Mussolini's fascistic regime took power in Italy. I just think that that's very telling. I think it's very important to remember that little history lesson there, okay? And yeah, I just think that people need to uh, need to be a little bit more aware of this, the way that this infighting is negatively impacting the left's ability to gain power. Fuck you cringe, lib liberal, woke scold morons. All right, you guys can sit here on Twitter, Pearl Clutch and Gatekeep, and try to label me a fascist because I dared to say that id poll is bad. Um, and I'll stay here fighting for the real issues. I'll stay here debating the transphobes and arguing against real harm that's being perpetuated by Republicans. And you guys can stay on your terminally online ass, purity checking each other, okay? And then one day, history will look back and we'll see who made a better influence and a better impact on the world. We'll see who did more change. History will remember all of us, but history will not look kindly on these fucking morons that sit on Twitter all day gatekeeping. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you get notified when I drop a new video.